Mr. Speaker. As an original co-sponsor of H.R. 1033, I would like to express my appreciation to Mr. Holt for his continued leadership to preserve and protect important historic battlefields throughout the United States, including those in his home state of New Jersey, which is better known as the crossroads of the American Revolution. As a Virginian, this legislation is also especially notable as it will continue to preserve important hallowed ground from our nation's independence and the Civil War. The Civil War Battlefield Preservation Program has been particularly beneficial to the Commonwealth of Virginia. As a result, hard-fought acres of battleground have been preserved in pivotal sites such as Appomattox, Cedar Creek, Chancellorsville, Fredericksburg, Manassas, Petersburg, and Richmond. Preserving battlefields does more than just honor those who fought in those battles. It protects important places from our nation's, excuse me, from, from development. I want to make sure that we continue those efforts in assuring that we make the effort to keep these battlefields in their proper place in this nation's history. I also would like to emphasize that this program doesn't increase the amount of federal land. I know there's been some criticism to say, well, this is an effort to increase federal land within this program. While it does increase and expand those battlefield areas that are eligible under the program, it doesn't increase the amount of federal land in this particular project. So I want to make sure that people understand that this is really for protection of battlefields outside of national park boundaries, giving uh, concerns within those areas the ability to help preserve those lands. And there's no additional management burden on the federal government. So these lands are not going to become part of a system where we have to incur more cost to maintain those lands. It's the ability to make sure that we preserve those lands, and especially today with encroachment from development in these areas, these critical historical sites must be preserved, and this gives the flexibility and the tools for those folks in those areas that want to be able to preserve these lands, the ability to do that. So, Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I thank my good friend from Virginia and uh, would reiterate what he has said. In fact, the original legislation, which we are reauthorizing and extending through this bill, uh, grew out of Virginia. It was because of the critical battlefields in Virginia that were at risk of being lost uh, that, this battlefield, that this battlefield protection legislation was developed but it will be beneficial across many states. If you look where the War of 1812 was fought in, in, in the Deep South and around the Great Lakes and the, war, the Revolutionary War fought up and down the, the 13 colonies, um, this uh, is something that is of great national importance. And because the authorization is about to expire, it is needed. And because so many of these battlefields are at great risk of being overrun by sprawl and development, it is at the greatest need now. I urge my colleagues to support it. And again, I thank my friend from Virginia. I yield back the balance of my Gentleman time. Gentleman yields back the balance of his time. Gentleman from Virginia is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As, as Mr. Holt said, preserving battlefields is extraordinarily important. And it does more than just honor those that have fought in the past. It's important that it protects these places that are so important in our nation's history. Preserving these battlefields contributes economically to local businesses and to historic communities in these areas across the country. And according to a recent study in just five states, those states including Missouri, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia, 15.8 million visitors went to these Civil War sites and spent nearly $442 million in those local communities and supported 5,150 jobs. We talk all the time up here about jobs and the economy. This is something that we can do to improve and enhance jobs and the economy in these local communities. And we're blessed in Virginia, as Mr. Holt said, with a rich history. And according to the Virginia Tourism Corporation, Civil War site visitors stay longer and spend more than twice as much as the average visitor to the Commonwealth. Preserving battlefields is good for local communities and businesses and good for jobs in the economy. This bill continues. 
for just a moment. I will yield, yes. And I would like to add to his economic numbers the fiscal fact that this does not appropriate any funds. We're just reauthorizing existing legislation and extending it. I thank the gentleman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The bill, again, as I said, continues a modest investment of federal resources to protect these hallowed grounds where our independence was won and our republic secured. And I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 1033. And I do want to iterate what Mr. Holt said. And this legislation does not increase authorized spending. Proponents of this program sought to double the annual spending authorization and add the Revolutionary War and War of 1812 sites to those eligible for grants. But the committee made sure that there was no increase in spending and insisted that the proposal be added to keep the authorization flat at these current levels when adding additional war sites. So we wanted to make sure we had the opportunity for sites to be included, but understanding where we are with the nation's deficit, we wanted to make sure that we could preserve these sites without adding to the deficit. So I think it's a responsible way to do that, to make sure that communities have that ability to do the things they need to do, and also making sure we keep in mind the times that we face here at the federal level. So I believe it's an extraordinarily good bill. And again, I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 1033, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back.